Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope you're all having an awesome start to your week. Welcome back to another MMQA. I have had like three cups of coffee and I have a feeling that this video might be a little bit chatty. So I'm just letting you guys know. All right, so let's get started with the very first question, shall we? From Gracie, what are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton on the go toe in the MM size? I've been eyeing one since they came out a year or so ago with the original size, but I am not tall, so believe that the MM would fit perfect for my day-to-day -day use. Um, all right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of this bag right now. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of the on-the-go tote in the original size, but the fact that they introduced it in the MM size, I think is absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Right along the same lines of what I talked about in last week's video with the Dior book tote, the fact that they have this in a smaller version, I think is wonderful. Because you still have that beautiful silhouette, you still have a very spacious, a very generous interior, you can see everything at a glance, you still have the versatility as far as the different options that you have uh, of how you can carry it, either on your shoulder or on the crook of your arm or as a hand carry bag because you do have those options. You know, so the fact that it's in a smaller version I think is wonderful because it's not as overwhelming. You know, and as I had mentioned, I am a big fan of the original size. When I personally tried it on, I liked it. I did find it to be just a little too big on my body frame, but the fact that you have a smaller version that still has those wonderful features, I think is going to push this handbag even more because you have options. You're not stuck with a one size type of bag that may or may not work out for your lifestyle. The fact that, again, you have those options, I think is absolutely fantastic. So I think, um, I think that this bag is just insanely beautiful. And I never thought that I'd really say that when it came to the giant uh, reverse monogram because uh, when it first launched, I didn't know how I felt about it. I was like, I don't know, is it, you know, do I like it, do I not like it? You know, and the more and more that I see it, the more and more I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm really attracted to it. Now, since we are on the subject, I wanted to run a couple theories by you guys and let me know what you think. These are just my own delusions and I am not trying to start any rumors by any means whatsoever. But when it comes to the on the go and the MM size, since that one is pretty much only available in the reverse uh, giant monogram, you know, as I said before, I wasn't always a fan. Uh, I do appreciate it. It's not a print that I necessarily want to move forward with just yet. Um, besides the fact that they wanted to test out how this bag would end up doing, and obviously it's been incredibly popular, I wonder if they only have it available in the reverse monogram to maybe get people used to the idea of the reverse monogram and maybe try to take their focus away from trying to get, you know, uh, canvas handbags and the other three prints, the Damia Band, the Damia Zor, and the monogram, you know? So the more and more that you see the giant reverse, if maybe if you weren't a fan of it, kind of like me, now it's starting to grow on you. Um, even though, you know, as far as myself, I can only speak for myself, I would love the on the go in the monogram. Can you imagine? I think it would look fantastic or even uh, the Damia Zor. I think it would be beautiful. But since it's not available in those, you know, it's kind of like you'll get used to it to the point where you maybe don't want to go for those other three prints, you know? I mean, that's a possibility. Only time will tell. And then the other part of me feels that because of its popularity, if Louis Vuitton decides to introduce this, uh, this bag in those three prints, I can imagine that the price point would be considerably higher. Instead of the 2300-ish, you know, uh, price point, it would be 2600 just because people maybe like myself have been waiting for it to be available in those three prints, you know? So it's almost like a genius marketing strategy. You know, it's kind of like, well, I'm going to hold out as long as I can. And then when we do introduce it, it's going to be X amount of money. It's going to be a lot more expensive because we already anticipate that it's going to be super, super popular. I don't know. <laughs> Again, these are just my delusions. You know, what do you guys think? Do you feel that that might end up happening? I don't know, but as I said previously, only time will tell, but that does make me wonder. And while we are on the subject of the on the go, um, Carissa Fowl, hopefully I said that correctly, she uh, she asked, what are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton on the go tote in the Empreinte leather? I really love the look and the versatility of this bag. All right, let me insert a picture of the on the go in the Empreinte.
The On The Go and the Emprunt version is available in two different colors and it's available in the GM size and it currently retails right around the $2,900 mark. And uh, when it comes to the Emprunt leather, I love the fact that it's a little bit more understated. It's not as in your face and it's still very, very carefree. So the fact that you can use it in any type of weather I think is wonderful as uh, as the regu as the canvas version as well. Uh, but still the Emprunt version, I just think it's very, very beautiful. The only thing that I wonder, of course I haven't had an opportunity to go into the boutique and try it on for myself as far as the Emprunt version goes, I wonder if it would be considerably heavier than the canvas version because you do have that beautiful Emprunt and because it's essentially an all leather handbag, um, I wonder if it would be a big difference in weight, you know, and it kind of reminds me of the Epi, um, the Epi Neverfull, you know, it, because that one is a little bit heavier than the canvas version. So I wonder if the Emprunt version of the On The Go will be a lot heavier, but the fact that it does have those dual straps, so that way you can uh, carry it on your shoulder and you're not necessarily limited to only carrying it on the crook, crook of your arm or as a hand carry bag, I think would really end up uh, helping out. But if any of you guys do have the Emprunt version, if you have been into the boutique to try them out. Have you found anything as far as how heavy it is in comparison to the canvas version? Let us know in the comment section down below. But when it comes to the on-the-go tote, whether it is the Emprunt version or it's the giant reverse or the new tie-dye one that's coming out, that's personally not for me. Uh, but still, when it comes to this silhouette, I think it is absolutely beautiful. The fact that it does have so much versatility and how you can end up carrying it. It's very spacious. It still has quite a bit of structure. And um, hopefully if the MM does as well as I think it's going to, to be that they end up introducing some of the other versions in the smaller uh, in the smaller sizes as well I think would be absolutely fantastic you know so I think that this bag is beautiful and I mean it is a tote so of course of course I love it uh, but for those of you that do have this bag again either in the Emprunt version or any type of version how do you find it do you love it are you guys thinking about getting it let us know in the comment section down below but fabulous questions and hopefully I was able to answer them Next question from Cherry La Pema Pema. Hopefully I said that correctly. Can you please update on the wear and tear on your Black Shine Logo Mania shawl? I know it's been a few years, but planning to buy the exact black one you have. Confused also between the baby pink with gold, it's so pretty, and the black, but leaning towards the black. Um, okay, so here is the uh, Shine Logo Mania scarf. Uh, I've had it for, I believe, either three or four years, right around there. So you have uh, the beautiful black and the silver threads throughout. And then if you turn it uh, on the back side, you have mostly silver and the black. Uh, this guy has definitely worn a lot better Better than I had anticipated. Of course, I also haven't used this as often as the denim monogram shawl because usually between the two, since the monogram shawl is a little bit thinner, that's the one that I end up going for. However, I, uh, I definitely used this guy a lot last uh, November and December because it was a little bit colder than what we're used to here in Southern California. I know, I know, make fun of me, you know, because of course it doesn't compare to other countries or to the East Coast or to the Pacific Northwest, um, but it got, uh, <laughs> it got a little bit colder here, you know, and once it goes below a certain temperature, I feel like, I feel like some peeps in Southern California, I'm not gonna speak for everybody, we kind of tend to go to the extreme and then we start to wear all of these layers or what have you. But anyways, I'm, <laughs> I'm totally rambling. Uh, but back to your question, um, as I had mentioned, it definitely ended up wearing a lot better than I had anticipated um, because I thought for sure that I would end up having some issues with the, uh, the metallic threading here. I thought that maybe they'd end up pulling a lot easier, especially with the type of, um, of jewelry that I wear. And I'm happy to say that that has not been the case. If anything, it does have quite a bit of pilling throughout. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it on camera or not, but it does have a little bit of pilling. And of course, because you have uh, this beautiful black on this side, you do end up seeing lint very, very easily. So I don't know, um, you know, that might be a deal breaker for some, but as far as the threads go, uh, no issues whatsoever. And um, I know some people feel that when it comes to the Logomania uh, shawls, that they are a little bit itchy. I personally haven't experienced that. I haven't had any issues with either wearing it on the black side or the silver side where it ends up kind of uh, bothering me on my neck. It's very, very warm. It's very comfortable. And if you end up living somewhere 
where um, it ends up being a little bit colder, I think that this is an awesome way to go. I feel that you'd end up getting a lot more use out of it, you know, versus living um, like, for example, somewhere like uh, Southern California. Um, but still, I think it is absolutely beautiful and um, I definitely recommend it. Now between the baby pink and the black, I think both of them are beautiful. I will have to say that in my personal opinion, I feel that the black is just a tad more dressed up. Of course, not saying that you can't dress it up or dress it down, but between the two, I feel that the baby pink is just a little bit more casual versus this one, you know, but it's definitely a matter of, um, you know, of what ends up speaking to you the most. But I do like this, very, very comfortable, not itchy. It's just a matter of being able to see that lint or being able to see that pilling, but no problems whatsoever with any type of um, loose threads, either with the metallics, uh, the metallics, the metallic side, uh, or even on the ends. I haven't had any issues with these guys kind of getting all frazzled and looking kind of funky either. So I just wanted to throw that out there just in case. So do I recommend it? Absolutely, absolutely I do. So I don't know if this ends up helping you out. If you do decide to go for the black one or for the pink one, congratulations on your soon to be scarf. Next question from Marissa Torres. I was wondering how you personally classify the newer brands such as Paulin and Sinrev. I think they're higher quality than contemporary brands, but less expensive than luxury, so I don't know what to call them. Uh, you're right, they're kind of like right in between because they do have different uh, details from some of the contemporary brands out there, and they are a lot less expensive than luxury. So for me personally, and it might sound kind of stupid, uh, because, because I was trying to say I was trying to say a couple weeks back and someone was like, what, what are you talking about? Uh, but, I, but I personally like to refer to them as high-end chic. You know, just because I feel like it's that perfect medium of where I feel that they end up falling. But again, it might sound totally, <laughs> it might sound totally stupid. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how I have referred to them in the past. And uh, while we are on this subject, I really want to know, where do you guys think that a lot of these... Um, these newer brands are going to be in five years time or 10 years time? Do you feel that they're going to uh, stand the test of time? Do you feel that they'll have their five minutes of fame and then they'll kind of fade off into the sunset? Or, you know, where, what do you think? Do you feel that, um, that maybe because of popularity, their prices might end up soaring and then uh, we'll end up hearing about them a lot more and then they might become, you know, one of the luxury fashion houses? Uh, again, I would really like to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, but as I mentioned, I do refer to them as high-end chic. I need, to, I need to come up with a different name because like I said, they're kind of in between. It's kind of like, how do you really classify them? Uh, it's a little foggy. So <laughs> I think high-end chic always made sense to me, but it, it, doesn't, sound, it doesn't sound so good. <laughs> it doesn't sound... It sounds silly to me. I, I don't know. <laughs> but um, for now, that's what I'm going to call it. But... If we can think of a different name, you know, if you guys can think of a different name, let me know in the comment section down below and that way we can kind of <laughs> move past that and be able to categorize them where, where they should properly go. I don't know. <laughs> but again, let me know your thoughts on where you see a lot of these newer brands uh, in five years time or 10 years time in the comment section down below. But great question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Louis1228. Can I get your opinion on the Lueve puzzle bag? Do you think it's just a trend? Do you think it'll hold up its value? Worried it's going to be just like the Givenchy Pandora bag. All right, before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the Lueve puzzle bag right now. I absolutely love the Lueve puzzle bag. There are so many things that this bag has to offer. You have different colors to choose from. You have different sizes to choose from. The fact that it's also very versatile. You can either hand carry it, put it on the crook of your arm. You could put it on your shoulder because it does come with an additional strap, I think is wonderful. And what I really like about this bag the most is that it is so incredibly unique. There isn't any other handbag out there that I can think of that looks very similar to it. You know, I feel like this one just kind of stand on, stands on it its own. Um, and the leather that they use for these bags is just incredible. I know that they have different textures, uh, but it is so, so soft and it's just, it's a beautiful bag, you know? And when I first saw this bag years ago, 
I wasn't too fond of it. I thought that maybe it might be a little bit fussy. It might look a little bit funky, but uh, my opinion has definitely changed. Uh, I remember going into Lueve last year and being able to really play around with the bags and, you know, kind of get a feel for it. And I fell head over heels in love with it, you know? So I think it is absolutely beautiful. Again, I know it's not for everybody. And do I think it's a trend? I don't think it's a trend because it is definitely a classic to the fashion house because it was first debuted in 2004 14, 2015, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been around for a long, long time. So I like to refer to it as a steady icon, you know, because when I think of Lueve, I automatically think of the puzzle bag, you know, so in my opinion, it is a classic to the fashion house. It is, you know, an iconic bag, and I think it is absolutely wonderful. As far as resale value goes, I do feel that it ends up holding its resale value a lot closer than some of the other fashion houses out there. Of course, I'm not talking about the top three. I'm more so comparing it to Saint Laurent and Givenchy and Celine, I feel that the Lueve puzzle bag, because of how iconic it is and because it is a classic to the house, it really ends up holding its resale value a lot closer to the retail price. You know, so I say if you if this bag speaks to you, if you're really digging on it, then absolutely go for it. It is just very, very beautiful. I love the fact that it's very unique, as I've said before, and um, the fact that you also have a lot of versatility with it, I think is wonderful. So I don't know if this ends up helping you out, but fabulous question. Next question from Michelle Kuntz. I just purchased the Alma BB and Damia Ben. Major congratulations, but the strap is a little long. I also have the Pochette Matisse in reverse. Would you use a reverse strap on the Alma? Would you mix prints? I suspect you may say it's personal preference. <laughs> yes, I, you know, I do say that quite often, and I know some people find it very annoying, but the reason why I stress it so much is because if something speaks to you, if you really like the idea of, of doing something, I say absolutely go for it, you know? It shouldn't matter what anyone thinks about it. You know, when it comes to fashion, when it comes to handbags, there are absolutely no rules, you know? And if you wanna mix and match things or if you wanna do this, that, or the other, I am all for that. Cause it's like, who am I to tell anyone what to do, you know, with their bags? Uh, so that's why I always say personal preference. But back to your question, would I mix and match prints when it comes to the Alma and the reverse Pouchette Matisse strap? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm a big, big fan of mixing and matching straps. Here I brought out the Alma BB and Damia Ben, and I often uh, use it with the Pouchette Matisse strap, the regular monogram. I really like it. If I had the reverse, I would use it with this as well, you know, because I feel like it adds, it adds a lot of personality to the bag. It adds a kind of a twist to it, a type of uniqueness. Plus the reason why I love this strap so much and I have, um, I have really, I mean, I've really used this with a lot of my Louis Vuitton handbags. I love it even more because there isn't any leather on here. So it makes using the bag that much more carefree, you know, because I'm not the biggest fan of the strap either. Um, for me, just the fact that it doesn't really have those adjustments isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but it's something that, um, you know, that kind of, that kind of bothers me from time to time. But the fact that I can play around with it a lot more with this strap, I think is awesome. You know, so yes, I am all for mixing and matching straps and it doesn't necessarily have to be just with Louis Vuitton bags either. You know, if you want to mix and match your straps from Givenchy to Louis Vuitton or from uh, Celine with a completely different brand, I think that's great as well. Uh, but yeah, huge, huge fan of doing that. And I feel like this strap has just really been able to, I don't know, kind of bring out so many different looks on other handbags that I have. And that's what I really like about mixing and matching prints or straps, if you will, because I mean, if you have two different bags and if you have the possibility to turn those two looks into four, I think that's wonderful because you're adding that much more, again, personality, that much more versatility to how you can incorporate that handbag into your collection. So I say absolutely go for it. I think it's fabulous. And the fact that it makes it once again, that much more carefree because you do have that beautiful reverse and this, uh, this, chocolate, uh, this chocolate brown, I think would look absolutely fantastic. I've also used this bag with the multi pochette strap uh, in the khaki, just because I really think that the colors look fabulous together. Of course, it's not, I mean, it is somewhat carefree, but it still has a tiny bit of leather, not a big deal. But um, I don't know, I just, I love mixing and matching. I love, love, love mixing and matching. So fabulous question, and hopefully I was able to help. And the last question from Monica Charles. I would like to know your opinion on the Chanel medallion tote bag. All right, before I get any further, let me insert a picture of this bag right now.
I am a huge, huge fan of this bag. I think it is absolutely beautiful. It is a discontinued beauty, and there are so many features that I appreciate about it. First and foremost, the silhouette. I love the silhouette. It does have a little bit of structure to it. It's not too boxy, which I think is wonderful. I feel that it's very easy to dress up and dress down. I love the fact that it has the zippered closure, so that way you have a little bit more security with it, and the fact that it is also leather lined. And that's something that you don't find too often nowadays when it comes to Chanel bags, um, you know, and the fact that a lot of the older ones do have that detail. I think is absolutely wonderful. So I am a huge, huge fan. You know, and I feel like if you are a fan of the GST, but you don't really like how boxy it is, and you don't like the fact that it doesn't have that much security to it, even though it does have that middle zip closure, um, I think that this is a really great option because it looks very similar to that in a sense. You know, um, I know some people aren't a fan because of the giant CCs that it has on the front. Some people feel that it's very gaudy. I disagree, I feel that it really compliments the bag you know so it's kind of it's kind of simple but not really you know just the details that it has I think um, again really complement the overall look of this bag and of course the um, the little medallion that it has on the zip uh, on the zipper pull I think is absolutely beautiful there is one thing that I wanted to mention just in case the handle straps um, or the handles seem to be a little bit on the shorter side, so it might be a little tight if you were to put it on your shoulder. I'm not saying that's gonna be the case for everyone, but again, I just wanted to throw that out there just in case. But still, you can end up carrying it on the crook of your arm as a hand carry bag. Um, I just think it is just insanely, insanely, insanely beautiful. And uh, there are quite a few on the pre-love market, and I do believe that when this bag was available, because like I said, it has uh, since been discontinued, I do believe that it retailed for like 2,200, 2,400, but uh, you can find them on the pre-love market for like anywhere from 900 to 1,400-ish around there. Of course, it depends on the, uh, on the condition, but I think it is absolutely, absolutely stunning and it's available uh, you can either find it in the uh, in the beige caviar leather or the uh, the black caviar leather, and I think it is wonderful. So if you want a little bit more security, if you want that tote bag that is still very comfortable, it might be a little bit on the heavier side just because it is an all leather handbag. Um, but still, if you want something a little bit different, something that has been discontinued and still has a lot of function, I think that this is a fabulous, fabulous uh, handbag to go for. So I don't know if that helps, but if you decide to get it, congratulations on your handbag bag. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Um, I don't know if you're going to see me next Monday. I might try for like Minx Tuesday or Minx Wednesday uh, because I do have, um, I do have a, a few days uh, with the hubby, uh, so of course I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to seize that time with him. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to film for Monday. If it's not Monday, I will try for Tuesday or Wednesday. Either way, I just want to let you guys know if, um, if I don't show if I don't show up on Monday. But uh, again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.